Today we're going to be looking at the Cybex Labelle, the semi-new ultra-compact from Cybex. I say semi because despite the fact that there are a few legitimate differences, the Labelle is quite clearly built off the GB Pocket design, which is owned by their parent company, Good Baby International. Not that this sort of rebranding is a new thing for Good Baby, mind you. Cybex is only one of over a dozen fronts through which the company rebrands the same designs, in order to create a sense of originality and brand uniqueness. But this review isn't going to be about all that, however. We have an article that covers the relationship between Cybex and Good Baby International on our Patreon page if you're interested. And it's not going to be about the GB Pocket so much either. Rather, in this video, we're going to be focusing in on the LaBelle itself, having a look at the model in terms of how comfortable it is for children and parents alike, its mechanical attributes, and with regards to what roles it fulfills in comparison to the larger market. So let's get started then, beginning with some stats. The Labelle clocks in at 5.9 kilos and folds down to 32 by 20 by 48 centimeters. Cybex claims it can carry up to 22 kilos in the seat, which, as I will explain in a moment, is highly optimistic on their part when considering real-world conditions, and can take roughly 3 to 4 kilos in the underslung shopping basket. As far as the seat is concerned, it's worth pointing out right from the offset that this is a very trimmed down, bare bones sort of stroller. Its targeted use is very specifically oriented on travel or day trip use, and its primary selling points are to be cheap and small, and the result of this design direction is that they've cut a few corners. Size wise, the Labelle seat is actually quite middle of the road for ultra compacts, though in my mind a couple of factors effectively limit the model's optimum use to roughly 6 months to a year and a half. On the younger end, because the model doesn't have anywhere near to a full recline, to me it's really closer to the recline you get with an airplane seat. And while there are newborn options for this model, I'd personally recommend avoiding them, given the model's otherwise small size, fragility, and poor terrain capability. Capping the model's age span at the other end is the fact that, while there is a small umbrella-style adjustable leg rest, there's no actual foot rest on the labelle, which means that as soon as your child has long enough legs that they don't receive sufficient support from the leg rest, they'll wind up dangling downwards with nothing to anchor them. This isn't a total deal breaker, of course, and fits with the model's bare bones short trip style, I suppose, but it definitely limits comfort for children older than 18 months or so to a few hours at a time. Moving on to quickly address other elements of the seat, the streamline theme continues, and the textile quality on the Labelle is what one generally gets out of Cybex's gold range, meaning pretty cheap feeling, yet still built from strong enough materials to not fall apart right away. The canopy is sparse as well, without any form of extension or sun flap, and offers a bit less than desired sun coverage in my opinion. As far as parent comfort and ease of use are concerned, one of the biggest improvements made to the original pocket design with the Labelle is the fold, which is a lot easier to flip open, making that origami-like two-step fold significantly more worthwhile in my opinion. And when folded down, like the pocket, the Labelle definitely offers one of the smallest folds on the current market. Note here that there are, however, larger and significantly better models that still fold down sufficiently small enough to fit in the overhead compartment of an airplane or train. The Labelle just takes this to another level in that its fold is so small that you could even fit it into a suitcase and still have room for other stuff, or tie it atop a rucksack. Personally, this means very little to me. I don't travel this way, especially with children, but I have had comments that other people find this useful. Beyond folding, the Labelle has a fixed handle at one meter off the ground, which might be a consideration for taller people, and the shopping basket is quite small and also a bit difficult to access due to the angle of the chassis arms, which stretch quite far backwards as they ascend, thus overshadowing the basket. As far as driving is concerned, the smaller 5-inch wheels and weak structure of the Labelle make it pretty unsuitable for any sort of rougher terrain other than perhaps fresh mowed lawn. This is something of a fixed condition for the model, and driving over even poorly maintained city streets for any significant amount of time is apt to cause serious looseness in the chassis. There are two additional concerns here as well, the first being that, even over relatively smooth terrain, the model is unlikely to handle all-day everyday use for longer than its guarantee period of two years. If you want any sort of longevity with this model, then it is really about using it purely as a travel or short day trip stroller. And secondly, though the model is promoted as tolerating up to 22 kilos, a quick test with my son, who's around 20 kilos, made it quite clear that this is actually too much for the model, with regards to tipping, as one must do to go up curbs, or really even just steering, because of the way the model's arms strain and bend, which over time would undoubtedly create problems with the connection points. What this means is that, even if you were okay with the lack of a footrest for older children, using the model with a child closer to the age and weight limit as set by Cybex would likely have a serious effect on accelerating wear to the Labelle, making the model loose and rickety at best, if not resulting in outright breaking something. Okay, let's move on to the mechanics of the Labelle then, starting off with the model's general structure and the folding system, which, as an ultra-compact, is arguably the key determining factor in the overall design. As far as how the system functions, the activation triggers are clever all-missiles-go buttons at the ends of the handles, which, while safe enough from child intervention, are always at hand, and not protected by any additional safety mechanisms. So if you're the fiddly and absent-minded sort, be careful to avoid the idle habit of strafing enemy aircraft while your child is seated. 
Internally, the system then rounds two 90-degree angles on either side in order to activate Cybex's standard mid-arm located locking mechanisms, allowing several horizontal hinged elements along the chassis to unfold into position. The key point taking the pressure for all of these points is still those locking mechanisms, mind you, and on top of the horizontal hinges are three hinge crossbars facilitating that extra horizontal fold, which, while they do allow the model to fold smaller than most other Ultra Compacts, they also bring with them an additional plane of looseness. As a side note here, the crossbars are good, better than what was there on early model GB pockets, but a lot of looseness and potential for symmetry problems could be avoided by creating some locking points for the horizontal fold as well, as one sees with horizontally contractible models like the Boogaboo Donkey for example. Overall then, like the pocket, the Lebel's ability to fold down horizontally as well as vertically is another one of those elements firmly placing the model as a limited use travel and short day trip type model. It's a way to cheat the inherent contradiction in wanting a competitively sized seat with a smaller fold, but the trade-off is a reduction in how much wear the model can sustain before all of those extra connection points loosen, making the model too rickety for comfortable use, if not outright leading to brakes or alignment issues with the internal mechanisms. Moving on then down to the rear frame of the model, note that with the Lebel, Cybex has abandoned that mainly superficial suspension that they tend to apply to most of their models, despite its severely limited effect on any of those in the smaller size categories. The Lebel's rear wheels are not removable, which positively allows for a sturdier connection, though negatively means that one can't easily get into the rear wheel housings to fix potential problems with the brake pins, and since the quite strange wire-based brake system mounted on the rear crossbar doesn't have adjustment screws and is also riveted together, it's fair to say that even if the model survives the potential for looseness problems higher up, failures in the brake system will likely be a fatal problem for most users. Looking lastly at the front frame then, the Lebel is actually built quite okay in relation to the rest of the model. Firstly, the front wheels have a certain degree of suspension built into the forks, which is not exactly necessary as everything else on the Lebel is completely antithetical to driving over anything other than the smoothest of airport or amusement park terrain, but still, it's something. Secondly, there are no swivel locks, which isn't necessary with use over smooth terrain anyway. And thirdly, unlike the back wheels, the front wheels are removable, which doesn't really mean anything on its own, but did allow me easy access to checking the connection between the front forks and the housings, which has done quite well, with O-rings and both inner and outer plastic rings on the top of the fork for protecting the front wheel housings against damage from the axle, in addition to the front forks also having been pre-lubricated with a thicker grease. All in all, I can say relatively safely then, that the front wheels are unlikely to be the first thing to go on this model in the long run, even if you don't hold to my advice of sticking to smoother terrain. So, would I recommend buying the Cybex Lebel? Despite all the negative things I said while discussing the model's mechanics, the answer to that is actually not a clear no. The Lebel has a place in the market. It's essentially the same place occupied by the GB Pocket, only the Lebel is built better, and at least that way, I feel that good babies sort of shot themselves in the foot with this one, especially since the Lebel only costs around 20 bucks more than the Pocket, and just the single as opposed to dual wheel setup would have been enough of an improvement to justify that price hike. In short then, if you're looking for an ultra compact for a child between 6 to 18 months for a specific trip or two to a destination that you know to be very smooth terrain wise, like Disney World for example, and you also definitely have packing considerations that necessitate a stroller small enough to fill only half a suitcase, thereby excluding similarly priced but better engineered models like Baby Jogger City Tour 2, then you should definitely consider the Cybex Label. Additionally, please note that in the same breath, I'd like to make a correction for anybody immediately jumping from this video to our review of the GB Pocket Plus. If this is the sort of model that you're after, then the Label is definitely better, and in my opinion, the Pocket has now been hereby relegated as irrelevant by its own creators. In any case, we hope you found this video interesting, and if you did, we ask that you subscribe, as it helped us to continue making videos in the future. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description. Thank you.